are mere casuals. <laughs> you can only be friends with you if you drink. Okay, we're recording now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so welcome back to Mere Casuals. We're not we're not really all drunk or anything. Um, yeah, podcast about World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King as casuals. I could barely remember what to say. It's been so long. Yeah, we're so casual. Yeah, well, we are. While well, we've been playing a lot, but we just haven't been recording because we've all been sick, like badly sick, off and on for the last two weeks. I couldn't even talk last week. Yeah, and the like, inconsider- at all. I just barely have my voice back now. The it was only a little annoying. Stop interrupting now. The inconsideration of all of us, we didn't do it at the same time. We all took our turns. Yeah, well, there was some overlap. We even tried. We even tried to record an episode remotely over Discord, and failed miserably at it because none of us know what we're doing. Also, our computers. Well, I knew Can't what I was doing. All of it. My job was to talk. <clears throat> I can do that well. Yeah, we also have terrible computers. Um, so yeah, so where do we want to start? Do we want to start with uh, talking about? So we're gonna we're gonna kind of travel back in time when we're talking about what we were up to, because we're gonna make a couple episodes to cover the last few weeks where we haven't talked about anything because we've all been sick, but we've still been playing probably more than normal because some of us have been off work at. I think we've all been off work at some time at some. For some point. amount of time, for some point, yeah, we've all been off work for an amount of time, at some point in the past two or three weeks. The redundancies, so, well, wow. yes, <laughs> yes, we're all very redundant. We're casual players. I know what you meant. Um, oh, right. Before we start, <clears throat> I have it written in my notes. Um, I have to do a big thank you and shout out to our. You know, I'm going to call them our rival podcast, the Forever Quest podcast, and EverQuest podcast. Well, because we're a World of Warcraft podcast, oh, okay. right? okay, that makes sense. They're an EverQuest podcast. They did do us a favor by giving us a shout-out on their show. Um, they have, I guess, a couple more listeners than us. I don't know if they have that many listeners, to be honest. But um, we did get a little boost in our listeners after they shouted us out, so we do appreciate that. Um, that show's run by a, a couple people that I've known and been friends with for a couple of years now. So they hear you. Yeah. Smash their fan base. No, I'm part of their fan base. I'm one of their eight listeners. Um, they probably have more than that. I don't know. But anyways, they they did a they did a little ad shout out for our podcast on their podcast. But uh, yeah, every time I talk to them about World of Warcraft, uh, they get all territorial because they say EverQuest's better and all that stuff. So. And I never really understood EverQuest when you tried to make me play it. Well, you know how World of Warcraft's an old game? Yeah, so is EverQuest. EverQuest's an even older game. Yeah. And they haven't they haven't even really updated it in some of the ways that World of Warcraft has, so it's it's old and it's difficult to play, but it's very fun and rewarding when you do play it. I tried EverQuest once. Once. Same. See, it's funny because back in the day they used to call it Evercrack because they said once you tried it you couldn't quit. But I guess I don't like crack. I was close. I, not. I was close. Once I tried it, I couldn't wait to quit. <laughs> oh, you people are terrible. So that's that's my little that's my little shout out for them. I think I said the name of it Forever Quest. It's an EverQuest podcast, but the Forever Quest is two words. Uh, there's some debate. I say it's for EverQuest. They say it's for EverQuest. Or the other way around. I can't remember. Well, one of the things that you got me really excited about with EverQuest. Uh, unlike WoW, where you quest level, you said, oh, we'll just go here and we'll just kill things. And we just ended up looking at these snakes and just shooting our little fire spells, which I saw absolutely no animation for. Um, and we just basically were supposed to sit there and shoot the same thing over and over and over again. I hate reputation. Repetition. I love reputation. See, that sounds oh. a lot like reputation grinds in World of Warcraft. I think that's where you're going with that. That's what I had in my mind, actually, but then I realized that's for the future. Yes. The thing is, when you play EverQuest, though, you have to play it with that sense of nostalgia, right? So back in 1999, when me and my friends at the time started playing EverQuest, our computers were all terrible, so the game actually has animations for the spells. If you cast a fire spell, it has a particle effect but no one's computer could handle it, so you had to turn them off. So when you played when you played EverQuest back in the day, what you would do is you would target the whatever you're fighting, then you would turn off spell effects, and then you would turn your character around, you would face a wall, then you would tip your camera down and you would face the floor, 
and you would just continuously hit your spell while facing the wall and the floor because you didn't want any of those fancy high-tech 3D graphics slowing down your gaming. So that was that was real gaming nostalgia, having to face the having to face the wall and the floor away from a boss the entire fight. Yeah. And one day we might do a podcast on gaming on a Tandy 1000, but well, it wasn't quite that bad. I don't remember. I don't I had, think though. I can be part of that conversation. How old were you in 1999? Nine. Were you nine already then? Depends on what month. Do you know what month that request came out? No. March 1999. Well, okay, so that is when I was born. Not that I'm saying your birthday's in March or anything, but that's when it came out. I was still in Hamilton at that point, destined to arrive into Peterborough shortly thereafter. In your mid-30s? How old were you in 1999? Yeah. 40s. Mid-40s, mid-30s? No. You were, you were a... Oh, you had to have been over 18, because that's how I was, that's old I was then. You had to be in your 20s then. You are 28? You were almost 30 then, weren't you? 27. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was almost close. No, I was, I was March, exaggerating, thinking, March, man, in your March, 30s. 26. Okay, yeah, see, no, I was, I was going to insult you, saying, yeah, you were practically 30, and then I thought about it and realized I was almost 20 mm-hmm. at the time, and you're 10 years older than me, so, <clears throat> yeah, I guess I was just accidentally right in an insulting way. So, insultingly right in an accidental <clears throat> way? Accidentally right in an insulting way. There's a difference, I think. There's probably a difference. But anyways, we don't how need to... How did I become friends with you guys? I'm so much younger than you. Like, how is this possible? That's a that story are... for a different podcast altogether, not a World of Warcraft <laughs> I'm just kidding. Board. I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's... A, that's we don't need to go into that whole story. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, blame, I blame Al in a roundabout way. I'll take it. Um, so we don't need to spend this whole podcast, see, we're six minutes in and we haven't even talked about World of Warcraft. We talked about EverQuest, which has always been my dream to have, to spend too much time talking about EverQuest on a World of Warcraft podcast. I'm awake. I actually just, I actually did just wake up. I took a nap this afternoon. So Borean Tundra. Well, no, let's not start with Borean Tundra though. Let's start by talking about what we were up to for the one week ish period starting approximately two weeks ago, but not quite, and ending approximately a week ago, but not quite. We did do some Borean Tundra. I feel like we, I feel like we did some Borean Tundra. We'll talk about that at the, near the end of the episode, because I've, I've written us out an agenda. Um, but we did do, we did some dungeons. We yeah. did some heroic dungeons. And we had, we had a fun experience on one of our heroic dungeons that I'm sure Sam wants to talk about. Oh, Sam, the floor is yours. Yes, hi. So, <laughs> what? I'm trying to remember which dungeon it was we were They doing. were looking for. Wasn't a it DPS. one of the. It was UP. Was it? Yes. Yeah. You're probably right. Yeah, was I think it was Pinnacle? Utgard Pinnacle. We've had a lot of fun in Utgard Pinnacle. Well, you know what? It's a fun zone, but the thing is, when you're only a group of three, maybe four if our tank friend logs, logs on, which he did at like 8 o'clock this morning. That was weird. Um, but, but he's a group of, a group of a three tank. primary. He only does it to... Well, I mean, he has a tank spec, and he's almost farmed some tank gear. Um, he did say he got a nice DPS upgrade this past week, which doesn't really help him tanking. But he did fine. He held aggro more or less, and I'm a good enough healer at this point that I can keep him up. I just, like to, I just like to say that almost farmers don't feed cities. You're probably right. <clears throat> and he almost farmed tank gear. He'll get to it. He wasn't sick like us, so he didn't get to play constantly for two weeks. He actually had to work. He was up at 8.45 in the morning. I'm sure he felt sick. (laughs) (laughs) So what we've been doing is um, Al slash Akona is a rogue. So you really have no option. Rouge. Okay, Al slash Akona is a rouge. So you really don't have much option but to be DPS, even though you do try to tank from time to time with mixed results. And Sam slash Roll Aaron is a hunter, so you really don't have much option but to be DPS. And I'm a paladin, so that means I'm the one that gets to have the dual spec and not play my DPS, my fancy DPS spec. And I've been queuing up as a healer because I have an offset of healing gear that at this point is actually like mostly Nax 25 raid gear for my healing set. I've actually gotten really lucky with my off spec stuff. 
So we've been queuing up for dungeons with two DPS and a healer, which actually hasn't been too bad. We've been using the in-game dungeon finder. And we did one dungeon finder, Utgard Pinnacle, and we had a very fun Death Knight tank. Sam, do you want to talk about our Death Knight tank? How did we end up talking about him when we were supposed to be talking about my uh, cool gear that I got? So you'll notice on the agenda, I oh. have what we were up to and in brackets, Moody DK tank. And then after that, I have Sam's first rate. <clears throat> no, we can leave this in. Okay. Why not? <clears throat> I, well, okay, but my, my agenda okay, he... is almost impossible to read because I wrote it in my handwriting, so. Yeah. Well, the Death Knight kept making fun of me because I didn't have any of my talents up. Well. And was that okay, the one? Okay, you, you didn't, but that was one of his valid complaints. But he was also kind of a jerk, right? Was that the one where I had to dismiss my pet, but I didn't? No, that was, that was just like yesterday. No, I don't remember. And that was... That was weird. They took like a shortcut past the first pack of mobs, but you have to kill and another pack of mobs to do it. I was very confused of what was happening, and then I just <laughs> ran, and then I forgot that I had my pet up. That doesn't matter. I mean, that wasn't important. But anyways, this this one run we did of Utgard Pinnacle, we had this Death Knight tank who uh, who kept asking was, if this was, was like, our why, alt. Why am I why am I the top DPS? I'm a tank. He was going on about and uh, asking if we were alts and just being very, very condescending. He's inspecting each and every one of us. Oh yeah, he inspected us all and he's like criticizing Sam's gear and talents, which you had forgotten to assign your talents. So they're- For a few months, not months, few levels. Well, since since you hit 80, well, I don't think you assigned any talents in, in Wrath of the Lich King, because I think you still had your not. level 70 talents set. You have now. I do now. Well, that would be the ten talents he was talking and about. And I yet. respect after that. I yes. went from Beastmaster to something. Marksman. Nope. Nope. Survival. Survival. I was just testing you. Well, have you been enjoying the survival? Yes. Because Beastmaster, remember, you just throw your pet in. And when shoot. I remember to set traps and send my pet in, I do more DPS. Yes. When I remember to do all of it. Because you've been dropping, like you drop, because like say we're say we're fighting a pack of four mobs. Tell me what you do. Pack of four mobs. Four or five. Like say we say we pull a pack of mobs. In, no, in a then dungeon. I run into the middle, drop my bomb thingy. Explosive trap. Explosive trap. Back up and do my volley, and then if I remember to send my pet in first, then I do way more damage. Yeah. But I usually helps. forget to send in my pet. Do you? When I do that, when I set the trap and then volley, I always forget to send my pet in first. But you're getting you're getting better at it, because we have been. I have been. We have. We all have DPS meters. And I've noticed that Sam has been. I finally up. topped Al. That sounded wrong. No, that sounded right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, yes, you, you. Out I out DPSed Al earlier today. You topped him. Al got topped. I got. Oh, I'm sorry. For what? Oh, for for a mob? For a pack? No, oh, overall. Yeah. My overall DPS counter says she I was, was on top of you for most of the dungeon. We gotta stop. Oh. We need to re rephrase that. My DPS that. counter shows something different, but I was a little bit. I did just update my recount, so maybe that could have been it. It doesn't matter. I was a little bit off this morning. I think Al Al has the DPS meter that uh, that makes rogues feel better about themselves. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're gonna be a rouge, you're gonna want a rouge meter. That's true. No, that's fine. I don't care getting topped. <laughs> I'm good with it. But now, this DK, though, I mean, let's see, he was a bit of a jerk about it, but in the grand scheme of things, he wasn't wrong. We he, immediately left the dungeon, and all of us um, improved our characters, my push, my but DPS. But the thing up. is, I'm there to be have fun. I don't care if we wipe, we'll go redo it. Like, I'm there to have fun, not to be serious about it. Well, yeah. Exactly. But like I said, he was a bit of a douche about it, but we, we still... Looked. I feel like you have something to say no, about No, I was this. just waiting until you guys were done talking, and then I was going to give my input on it. We, we took a look at our characters. There was a few things I could improve as well. But no, we got our, our DPS, I think, doubled. I think our DPS doubled. Possibly. I mean, you did respec after that. And, and then you and redid my bar. We did. Oh, well, yeah, because we do that every time you respec. We, we look up... We, we um, instead of figuring out how to do things, we just, every time we uh, we start a new character or try a new spec, we go to the Icy Veins website 
which is a World of Warcraft website that has like class guides, not what Al thought it was originally. You thought it was something dirty. I was like, well, I'm going to Icy Veins, and you're like, oh. No, I thought Icy Veins was a World of Warcraft class guide. I don't know what you're referring to there. I'm referring to some of your inappropriate comments. Oh, I'm making appropriate comments all the time, and I don't remember that one, but I know what Icy Veins is. Okay. And Sam knows what it is. Oh, maybe you were confused. It's Someone like, was confused. It's like Wowhead on crack. It's like Wowhead, but more useful. Wowhead's fine. Well, Wowhead has a lot of useful information, but when it comes to get class guides and spec guides and all that stuff, it's better. So yeah, we go to that and we read the uh, the DPS rotation, and we set up Sam's bar based on what they say to do. So, <clears throat> but you've uh... oh what I, what I was going to say though oh yeah because so this DK tank that we had, even if he may have been right about some things, there are more constructive ways to phrase it other than uh, spending the entire dungeon kind of deriding people for being lesser than him it gave us something and, to laugh uh, at it did did but it was still annoying like we all it, it brought us together it brought us closer together as a group i think we've done more heroic dungeons since that one than we did before and i think we've gotten better as a team not Utgard pinnacle I didn't nexus think it was was it nexus nexus Oh, I hope it was Nexus, because that ties into this episode, because we're talking about Borean Tundra and Nexus, Nexus, and I have Eternity later. Because... No, I joined Nexus late. No, Um, you joined Nexus on time. You had to leave for a while in the middle. (laughs) Okay, so no, that couldn't have been the same guy. Okay, never mind. It was Utgard Pinnacle. It was one of the heroic dungeons. I don't remember which one it was either, to be honest. Um, I thought it was one of the... uh, one of the Storm Peaks one. I thought it was either Halls of Stone or Halls of Lightning. It wasn't? No. Okay. No, it was really? It wasn't Halls of Lightning? Because I remember running down the corridor. Several of them have corridors. The, the, all the Vikings down the corridor. Where the dragons fly. We did it today. We did do it today, but we didn't have the Moody DK tank today. Yeah, so... That's a fun... That is a fun... That's a fun raid. I think we talked... Or not raid. Five men. I think we talked about that last time because we did our Howling Fjord... Um, recap, but that was that feels like so long ago. No, oh, but Nexus was a bit of a rough run for us too. Nexus was kind of rough. The, well, the first time we tried it, well, it's because we're trying to do a lot of stuff with like us as a group, and either using our tank friend as a tank or like pugging a tank in one more DPS. And depending on who we get up, depending on who we get for those pickup players, it can either go really smooth or kind of iffy. Like today, we had that not particularly smooth calling of Strath home run yeah, that we were we successful. Four times. Mm-hmm. Like we were, we we won. Like it was good. Yeah. Um, but we had a undergeared tank who means well, and a mage who had clearly never been there before because they got the achievement for yes. it at the end, and didn't really seem to know the the zone, which is fine because we had fun and i'd rather group with that type of person the thing i enjoyed about that is that he didn't sit there and start complaining about all the idiot things that we were doing because he was participating in the idiot things yes and we all had fun we all died we all came back we did we only wiped once and that was kind of bad luck because the first boss in that zone does this like chain thing and like stun someone for five seconds and he did me the healer three times in a row at the start four I think it was three. Was it four? Okay, so four times in a row at the start. Which, when you have your healer getting chained, chain chained, and a tank who's not particularly well geared, you end up with a wipe. And then we forgot to take Arthas with us. Yes. So, yeah, so we did that little roadway three times. I tried to sneak through. Didn't That didn't work. Then we had to go res you. Well, Well, first, was it, did Brad try to just run back? Sorry, our tank. Did our tank try to just run back? Yeah. He tried to just run back and he died, so we had to fight our way well, to him. I don't think any of us were expecting all the mobs to be back up. Yeah, I didn't know they respawned. But in hindsight, I do kind of remember that now. In hindsight, I think they were spawning behind him, too, if he made it so far in, because I think some of it respawned on him. I think he was running, and then it started to respawn as he was running, and it kind of spawned around him. But we made it through. We just didn't get the bonus boss for the mount because we were a little slow. Yeah. And I apparently have the mount that I didn't know I had. You have the mount off the bonus boss. You got yeah, that the first time we did it. I don't remember ever finishing the extra boss. 
It's because you don't have your artisan flying yet, so you can't actually use the mount. So it's probably not a real memorable thing for you. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, but if you need on it, we're going to be cussing you out. Do you, you not can't. have it? They're unique. No. It doesn't show up the next time. Well, I guess we don't have an opportunity to cuss you out then. But or it I, does, I don't know. But I do need the needy achievement. Oh, I remember what we were going to do for this episode. I wrote the whole recap and then remembered it was Halloween last night. Night. No, last it wasn't. week. It was not it was not last night. It was like a week ago. We were gonna do a Halloween episode that we never did because we were all sick. Mm -hmm. Maybe eventually we'll do a retroactive Halloween episode and talk about the world event. But that is not on the list for today. On the list for today we have uh <clears throat> what we were up to, which we just talked about, and then we have Sam's first raid. Which <laughs> was you like, say it like that. Because that's how you say things. You have to like use uh I don't know vocal stuff when you're when you're doing podcast things you have to like do things with your voice to make yourself sound interesting it's less exciting because if i just if i just sit here and talk in my normal voice i'm not an interesting person so i have to pretend i'm interesting while we're doing this okay so you're not interesting okay no so if you don't mind <clears throat> pretending you're interesting as well okay i'm not though none of us are that's okay. that's why we're faking this i'm an that's interesting that's why we person. write it well you're you're interesting all right thank you Al's probably the most interesting of us when it comes to talking, because he's been talking for 10 years longer than I have and 18 years longer than you have. No, he's more I, experienced at I it. I was a late bloomer. Were you? I don't know. I don't remember that far back. It was a long time ago. But anyways, Sam's first raid. Do you even remember what your raid, what the raid was at this point? Because it was like... I have eternity. Hmm? I have eternity. I have eternity, yeah. So you got so our guild that we were in that I like, and Sam. I like. Well, you keep complaining Shh. that they don't. Shh. Just they don't they acknowledge listen. you. They don't. People don't listen to this. No, people listen. I don't know. They they might listen someday. Who knows? Um, someone might. Uh, but our guild was doing Eye of Eternity and Obsidian Sanct Obsidian. I can't say this Obsidian. one. Obsidian. Obsidian Sanctum, um, and we needed. A couple extra DPS, and you were awake at the time, which is unusual Rare. for you. So we we brought you in, and you were the only hunter in the raid. And, and all only hunter gear was dropping. And some good hunter, good. you got your your black ice pole arm, which is apparently one of the best, I think the best hunter item you can get right now. So you made some of the other hunters in our guild jealous because they didn't show up for the raid, so they didn't get the drop. And you got your tier seven point five gloves, which are also quite nice. Which I died in that one. Like right at the beginning, the one with the I the drakes. The bubble. That yeah. wasn't right at the beginning, was it not? No. So we might as well. Have you done this raid before? Nope, never. Nope. So we'll we'll describe it for your benefit and for our benefit, so we have something to talk about. Um, so this one, it's a three stage fight. Um, Sam got to experience stage one and then died. Yep. At the okay. early stage two, not See, I told you, you early. Experienced some stage two. So stage one basically is your normal boss fight. So this big dragon flies down, uh, a tank puts it in position, and we all DPS it. Is that while when these you go little, up on the discs? No, that's phase two. Oh. While these little like orbs slowly float into the middle. And if the orb gets to the tank slash boss, something bad happens. I can't remember what off the top of my head. Um, he might lose aggro or something. But if it drops in the DPS pile, we get a DPS buff. So it's like a damage buff. So we do like 50% increased damage or something like that. And these sparks will flight it, will float in throughout the fight and we have to position the boss. So we try and drop these sparks in the same spot because each spark like stacks, the buff from it stacks. So you can get like several 50% damage buffs out of these things and the fight will go faster the more damage buffs you have. Um, very similar to a fight in Nax actually, which we're not going to talk about today. Um, so then that's phase one. So when that ends, he like does some role play talking and then he flies up in the air and he starts like shooting these breath attacks at us from the air. And these anti magic bubbles start forming on the ground and they'll form and then they'll start shrinking. So you got to stay in the bubble because if you're not in the bubble when he does the breath attack, you die. So and as is that the bubble. Where I died? Yeah, you got. I think you got hit by one of the breath attacks because 
while while the bubbles are slowly shrinking another one will appear somewhere else like at full size and you have to time the whole raid running from the shrinking bubble to the new bubble and if anyone doesn't make it in time they're going to get killed by the breath weapon so while this is happening there's also these like arcane apprentice mage things that are flying around on floating discs attacking the raid so they get pulled into the bubble the raid the tank tanks them and the raid dps is down the the guys on the discs and then there's a disc so melee dps who can't be shooting at the boss through this phase they jump on a disc and you can fly up in the air and while you're on the disc you can't get hit by the breath attack so you fly around on this disc and you attack the the mages that are firing at the raid as well as the dragon so once we've killed enough of these mages or dps the boss down far enough with range I'm not sure which because I'm always up on a disc flying around killing stuff. Um, once that finishes, um, he will do some more like roleplay stuff. He'll do some more roleplay stuff and then we all go down and we hide in the bubble and then he like blows up the entire room we're in. And we all start falling and then we do the thing that Blizzard seems to really enjoy this expansion. We do vehicle combat, which I don't like, but now we're all on Drake's and uh so we're on these drakes and we have um basically some rogue abilities and like a tank and a heal ability so we have to spam our one key to build up combo points with our attacks you would know all about this and then the four key uses the combo attack points for like a big attack um and then he will periodically target one member of the raid for this big attack and we have to use our, I think it's a, it's not a bone shield, it might be a bone, some sort of shield of, of ability, it's number five. Um, we have to use that and it'll absorb some of that. And all the while he'll be sending this like static attack that does an AOE effect. So when he does the static attack, the whole raid gets damaged and we all have to move as a clump because one of the drakes is spamming their area of effect heal ability. So we all have to stay stacked, move together to get out of the way of these, these thunder, AOE things and we keep kind of rotating around the boss like that until we've finally done enough damage with our rogue attacks to uh, to kill the boss and he dies and a chest spawns and you get loot and in this case Sam got her black ice polearm which looks like a mage staff not a polearm it looks cool but it doesn't look like a polearm. I thought the gloves were from that one. Nope black ice was from Malagos which is this fight which oh, I never okay. said what the fight was called. The gloves were from Sartherion, Saphir, no, Saphirion is Sarth, the, the, the Drake and Obsidian Sanctum, Obsidian, Obsidian Sanctum. So okay. that was a fun fight. Did you enjoy, did it look fun? It looked like fun. While you were hovering. As I was watching. Dead. Um, <clears throat> so we did that 10 man. That was fun. You did, you did fine while you were alive. I was probably the only one who didn't know the fight. Um, no, no, a lot of us didn't. That was only the second time I've ever done it. Oh. And we have we have a very nice guild leader in our guild. Explains it explains very well. Explains it all. Explains every fight thoroughly and, and, and holds people's hands through it. It's it's really, really good. You've so, got to give the people what they want. I don't know what that's a reference to. Well, of course you do. You just don't want to say it. Do I? Is it a wrestling thing? Oh. See, I only know it's a wrestling thing because you're like, uh... Yeah, I don't, I don't know the wrestling things. Who's the wrestler that says whatever I just, you just said? Well, it's usually the announcer. Oh, so he's based not on, a wrestler. Based on some, well, he, well, he used to be, but it's based on some actions in the ring. We'll oh. watch it later. No. Oh, we probably no, won't. No, thank you. I can't stand wrestling. <laughs> Al loves wrestling. At least we both like World of Warcraft. Um, so then we did, then we did the uh, the Obsidian 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 Sanctum. You know, every time I have to say it, I'll just pause and have you say it for I'll me. I'll be your pitch speaker. So after that, we did... Obsidian Sanctum. Okay, which have you done that fight before? Again, no. <clears throat> Never? You didn't even do them before when we were playing? I don't think so. You didn't do much... No, I didn't do much raiding before. I either. didn't do any raiding in Wrath. Uh, I started raiding in Clapoclism when... Cladoclism. You didn't even say that. No um, one can say that. Cataclysm? Yes. Cladoclism. Anyway, uh, when they had Raid Finder. Oh, right. Yeah, people hated that, didn't they? Oh, well. That's the only chance I had to raid. It was nice for mere casuals. 
because we weren't in guilds at the time, or we were in guilds and they were bad. Um, but do we want to? Do, do you want me to describe the the Obsidian Sanctum fight, or do we want to save that did. for later? No, that was Malice and I have Eternity. Eternity. Okay. We'll talk about Obsidian Sanctum another time because we've been going for a while and we have more stuff to talk about. So that's actually part of. So I have Eternity. That raid is in Borean Tundra. The Say it, Obsidian Sanctum. Yes, is in uh, Dragon. Is it Dragon Blight or Dragon Spine? Dragon Blight. Dragon Blight. Okay, I I feel like I'm confusing. What's Dragon Spine? Is that a it's Game a place of Thrones in Dragon thing? Blight, I think. Isn't no, Dragon Spine in, like a uh... Game of Thrones thing? Or is that like a? Or is that uh, Wheel zone. of Time? Might it's be Wheel of Time. Zone. I don't know. I feel like Dragon Spine's a thing, and I've got it in my head for some reason, and I can't get it out of my head. It's probably. I feel like it's Wheel of Time. Um, anyway, it's not important. So we'll talk about that. We can talk about that raid when we talk about Dragon Blight, which, because we've all been sick, we did not really prepare a detailed like dun or uh, zone lore. So we're just defaulting to Borean Tundra because we've all done it. <coughs> so I wanted to talk about dailies a little bit next, because we've all been doing daily quests, and mm -hmm. everybody that plays World of Warcraft knows that there's a lot of uh, daily qu daily quest busy work to do. So, what am I looking at? I know, oh, Dragon Spine is in the Blades Edge Mountains. Oh, okay. I told you it was another zone. Well, the Dragon Spine I is an area right in Blades. was actually right for something. You were kind of right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google, because I feel like it's also a Wheel of Time thing. Okay, so dailies. So, Al could talk about dailies, so we don't have complete dead air while I'm Googling things. Well, with dailies, I'm mostly doing the profession stuff. I'm doing uh, cooking, jewel crafting, fishing, and uh, well, those are the dailies that I'll talk about. So the cooking is pretty good. It gives you something simple to do in and around Dalaran. You hand it in, in and around Dalaran, and you get some awards. You get some achievements for your awards. You use these awards to buy the recipes and you can move on with your cooking. I got up to 400 cooking. I'm now on the fish feast. Everybody knows I'm a big fan of a fish feast. Um, have you been, have you, <laughs> gross. Oh, have you been, have you been making those? Cause you're still dropping the boar feasts when we do that. I use a just lot of materials. You just up your boar feasts? Yes, I do have a few fish feasts. I enjoying, okay, so people hate the ghost fish. Really? And That's like the easiest one. Like the daily? Well, they don't want to go all the way to Shalazar and oh. pick it up. But there's a lot of nettle fish in there, and it's one of the prime ingredients for the fish feast. So I enjoy the ghost fish, which pops up. It popped up today. So that's the fishing daily. It gives you a certain amount and a certain kind of fish that it wants, and you got to do certain things. So I should stop vendoring all my nettle fish when I do the ghost fish daily? If you want. I probably have more than I need, but... I'm kidding. I've been hoarding them because I don't know what they're for yet. And actually, it's not always fish. So they have the one where you have to kill an animal and then run into the water and create a pool of blood before Dita sees you. Um, which then these carnivorous fish come. You catch five of those, which is usually two casts. Uh, the ghost fish, you have to catch it, and it disappears after about 60 seconds. So you have to figure out its secret. You have to do something rash. You have to eat it. Um, How long did it take you to figure that out? I don't remember the first time, but second time I knew what to do right away. So you eat it. Well, when it says it's going to disappear, you have no time to fly anywhere. Is it really you, 60 seconds? It's yeah, that fast? Yeah. You don't have time to cook it. And you might have time to cook it, actually, but you don't have a recipe. So, yeah, just pop it in your mouth and see it. Failing that, you fish up another one. So I just popped it in my mouth. Yeah, I think it actually has like a little tool tip on it that like warns you not to eat it because there's like you don't know what it's going to do. Yeah. But I, I just ate it the first time I caught it, too, because, I mean, what are you going to do, die? Yeah, you just need to be come back, yeah. And then there's the one with the uh, jewel in the sewers. I've gone over to the fishing quest, by the way, right from cooking. Um, so there's jewel in the sewers. You pick up a corroded piece of jewelry because somebody really, really wants it. Um, one guy got unlucky and a shark bit his arm off. So you're fishing in the waters in Dalaran, and you get a bloated fish. You have to click on that. His arm's inside. So I guess they're going to reattach it, much like is they that did. Part of the, is that the daily? Yeah. Oh, I haven't gotten that one yet. Yeah, so much much like what they did to that guy on ER. Um, then there was another one which I got recently, which is the first time I got it, and I've lost what it is. So I will retrospectively Is it the it coins in the fountain? I No, 
No, that's not a daily. That's just an achievement. No, but isn't there one where you have to fish something out of the Dalaran fountain or something? Or is it that... I know it's an achievement, too, but there's well, not there's a daily there's the corroded jewelry in the sewer. Oh, okay. I feel like I haven't done them. I started late on those. Yeah, but uh, there was... Oh, the terror fish in Wintergrasp. Right. Which, by the way, is not as exciting anymore. We enter Wintergrasp, and we're not automatically tagged for PvP. <laughs> Lame. Just gonna say, not that I like the PvP. Are a you lot. not? Because I can't find my PvP tag on my uh, on my no? character screen, so I just assumed I was PvP tag. No, unless that. the actual event is going on, in which case you're in an instance. I'm guessing because it's not actually in the zone. Well, yeah, if you're just in there fishing and Winter Grasp starts, you either get booted or you have to join the the battle. You can't just stay there and fish. Yeah, but no, you go in. You're not tagged. You used to be. You entered. You enter Winter Grasp. You're fresh meat for everybody oh, see i just assumed even flying over it that i was flagged i didn't even realize that right so yeah no you're not so anyway that was fishing and then jewel crafting again i'm getting tokens that i can use to buy my recipes and you yeah that's exciting. so how does that how does that work you do a quest you get a token yeah. And a recipe costs one token, or do you have to solve, sorry, save up like multiple tokens for a recipe? So all of these dailies have about five different versions of quests. So there's, there's different versions. I have to go out and kill a certain kind of mob to get one piece, and then I use two jewels, and I combine them together to create a figure, a statue, something. I hand it in, I get the, the quest I can use. I get the token. I can use the tokens to buy dragon's eyes, but I can also purchase dragon's eyes for the low, low cost of 200 gold. Um, which was sarcasm for me, but Josh will probably say, yeah, that's not much. Um, <laughs> or I can use them to buy recipes, uh, which will range anywhere from two to seven tokens. So I, I have here as one of my notes uh, on jewel crafting. Oh, no, that's on. That's, I have that as a note for our next episode. Yeah. But why can't you make my plus 16 strength gems yet? I haven't learned it yet to oh. make the answer simple, but I can go home and make good, it. Good you ready just, for them? Just harass him like he did with me with my leather working until he got what he wanted. That's actually, that's part of your daily section here that I was going to ask you about oh. next. But, ask you about next. But no, I'll get that because I've been sitting there wondering what to do with my, my things. So interesting things to look out for when you're doing these. In uh, fishing, every now and then in that little pack you get a waterlogged recipe. I've never seen one. No, I've had two or three of them. You, It's a side quest. You take it, you hand it into the NPC, and it gives you five awards. Oh, um, neat. In... Oh, so you don't get an actual like cooking recipe or something from it? No. Oh, no, I, I assumed it was like a way to get recipes. It's like it's, the uh, like the necklace and the the glyph of the book of glyphs and stuff. You know the wine shop where you get yeah the, the cheese wine platter one or the cheese platter. There's a girl in there. I think it's. No, Marcia Chase is the one that hands out the fishing. So there's there's a girl in there, and he handed to her. She wants to open up her own little cooking establishment. So she's taking all these recipes. See, I feel sorry for her because there is not a lot of open real estate in Dalaran. Well, not only that, how far are they in? Does she have a restaurant yet? I don't think so. We'll have to look on on that. We're just playing classic, but... Well, the, the thing is, like, Dalaran is supposed to be a city, right? I feel like you, you my know, yard know. is bigger than this city. Yeah. Like you can you can run a circle around the whole thing in about eighteen seconds. Oh, it'd be really hard to run a circle around it. You'd have to fly. on the inside. You can run on the on the inner concourse. Um, oh, I was gonna say something about oh. So an interesting thing I learned about the fishing dailies. I assumed because I hadn't started doing the fishing dailies because I was lazy and didn't up my fishing. So my fishing was only about one fifty, going into Wrath of the Lich King. So, my... so I assumed oh I'm I can't do zero. the fishings. Yep, you could do the fishing dailies. I assumed I can't do the fishing dailies, right? Because my fishing's so low. So one day I picked it up. I had picked up, and it was the ghost fish one. I was like, oh, I'll up my fishing, and I'll do it when I get around to it. So I was in Sholazar Basin anyways to do the Oracle's dailies, which is a, which, which is another daily quest chain. Um, and I just started fishing, and like every so often I'd catch a normal fish, and then I would just... Ra and then I just suddenly I caught the ghost fish, and I was like... Oh, so this is actually possible. So yeah, you can do the fishing dailies no matter how low it is. So I've been using the fishing dailies to up my fishing skill. And I'm up like, I think with my, because I got the fishing hat. Mm -hmm. That's one of the rewards you can get. A, the, I don't remember what it's called, but you can get a hat. Weather beaten. The weather beaten hat that has a plus five or 10 fishing modifier on it. And then you can click on it. You don't have to have lures in your inventory. It puts a lure on your fishing bowl. 
So I think between my fishing rod, my hat, and the clickable lure, I think I'm at like 325 fishing or something. So I'm actually almost reliably catching fish now. And I did that all just through dailies because you can do the dailies with that fishing skill. I think I'm at about 322, 325-ish just on skill alone, um, <laughs> let alone the weather beaten hat. But no, they got rid of the uh, level constraints on certain fishing areas with wrath. See, I knew they got rid of the level constraints. Um, I thought you just caught the garbage until you reached the target. Like, I didn't know there was always a chance, even at low levels, that you could catch the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's just a chance to catch the good stuff. Um, so you could, if you wanted to level your fishing, just go no, pick up the fishing daily. I'm to do something now. Oh, you actually Because I just sat at Dallary and I fished in the pond just to get in, like, it the up. fountain? The fountain. Did you get any coins? She had to have gotten coins to get up to 200. Because you can get, that's one of the achievements. You can get, like, you can fish coins out of the Dalaran Fountain. And if you collect all the coins, you get an achievement for it. There's, there's like, two or three different achievements. I do not Did remember. It? Well, who knows? He probably so, vendored them. So, interesting side note as far as jewel crafting goes, if I may digress, is that there is one thing you can do to build up your tokens faster. And it's not a daily quest, but it is, it's a broken necklace which sells for way too much money. I didn't understand why people would spend that much on it because one token's one token. I still don't understand it, but. I think what we figured out is you can use that because you can get one token per daily quest per day. Yes. And you can only do it once per 24 hours, but you can do this necklace turn in as many times in a 24 hour period as you want. Mm -hmm. So it's for people who want all the recipes right now and have more money than they know what to do with. Yes, but if you bought the expensive one, the seven token recipes, you're spending like twelve to 15,000 gold just on different... Getting That's all a those. lot. But <clears throat> I know like, for example, the... I don't know how much the raw gems cost. I, see, I don't jewel craft, so I'm gonna. So let's do let's do a little breakdown of how this could possibly be financially viable. So let's say you're a jewel crafter and you want to get the bold. What is the red gem called? Well, hold on. Do you want to do this now, or do you want to do a professions podcast? I actually have. In see, this is episode three right now. Episode four, I actually have a session section set aside for professions. Actually, most of the next episode is going to be professions. Do you want to wait and talk about this during the professions? Yeah, episode? because otherwise we'll divert. We might as well cover the rest of this. We've been we've been diverting a lot. Yeah. So we'll do we'll do a breakdown. I'm going to add this to my notes. Uh, what do we call this? A cost benefit breakdown of damaged necklace. Yeah, I don't think there is a benefit to it unless you're buying. Oh, there might be unless you're because, buying from those gold sellers. Because I've had I've used some trade skills where I where I am investing large amounts of gold with the expectation that I'm selling something early on and going to make money back. So, we'll discuss it then. Of, what is it called? Damaged necklace? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hate it when you do that. All right. So that, that has been added to the notes for next episode. So, so Sam, what I, dailies have you been doing? The Hodor. Hodor? Hodor. Sons of Hodor? Yes. And then the Oracle ones, I want to make I like a Game of Thrones joke, but I can't think of one. Well, it's oh, Hodir, the... isn't it? It is Hodir, and I just call it the Sons of Hodor, because I can't pronounce oh, it. Oh, am I saying properly. it wrong? You're saying it wrong because I've been saying it wrong to you for the oh. last, like, two weeks. I would say Sons of Hodor. It's Hodir. Like you make me go to Dunder Mifflin? Dunder, yeah, you go to Dunder Mifflin, the quest hub for the Sons of Hodor. I can't remember what it's actually called. What is it? Like, is it like Dun Nifflin? Dor Nifflin? Niffledor? No, I don't think it's Niffledor. That sounds like that sounds like something else. I thought it, it was done something. Aren't we just great professionals? I think it's done Nifflum, but I just call it Dunder Mifflin because why wouldn't I call it that? It's like that guild we were in. What, what, what was the name of the guild we were in? Threat. The office shit. The office. Night. Office threat. themed what is threat it? level midnight. Yeah. The office themed <clears throat> guild that we were on when we briefly played Alliance on this server when we came back. Ugh, Alliance. Um. So yeah, do you? Talk about the talk about the dailies for that because you've been doing those. Why? Who who told you you had to? Dun Niflum. Sons of Dun Niflum. Yeah, the sons of Hodor at not Hodor, the sons of Hodir at Dun Niflum. So who made you start doing those dailies and why? You. No. How? Yes. For gear. No. no. I don't remember. A bag. That was your bag. Oh, that your bag, bag. Your mining bag. I didn't make you do it. He I was forcing asked. me because I wasn't working fast enough. 
because he couldn't just go pay 50 gold off the auction house. He had to have you make the mining bag for him. And I don't then think his... they were 50 gold. And I mean, I could have. They were because I looked it up and I was like, oh, you can just be selling these for like 50 gold on the auction Do house. they still sell for 50 gold? Probably. I don't know, probably. I mean, stuff like that. The, the price can only dip I can now so make low. you an encryption? Encryption? Inception? Inception bag? Inscription oh, bag. Inscription bag. Yes. Which somebody did already. But yeah, I know. You couldn't wait for me. You, you... I didn't even ask for it. One of the one of the other hunters, because every hunter is a leather worker for some reason. One of the other hunters in the guild was making them for skill ups and offered to me it for offered it to me for free. I couldn't just say no. You should have been like, no, my wife's gonna do it for me. Yes, I'm gonna, I just I'm, learned I gonna yesterday. Say no, I refuse to take this free bag. I'm no, gonna wait. No, I actually weeks. just learned yesterday that I could make them. I didn't even know I could. Oh, I knew you could. I just didn't ask for it because I knew I already had one. And I didn't want to make you feel bad. Just yeah. be thankful I didn't ask you for a gem bag. <laughs> I can't make. Oh, those. tell the gem bag story, Al, and then we'll get back to Sam's. All right. Can so... I make those? No, no, it's not even a thing. Oh. So I, I asked for the mining bag and I asked for a gem bag from somebody else so that I can put them in my bank so I can store more materials in my bank. Because you're a jewel crafter. Yes. So it turns out that my research was a little bit flawed and that I wasn't looking at a gem bag. In fact, there is no gem bag. And somebody went to all the work of making these bolts of cloth that they can do once every four days. And they spent days and days and days getting this bag and they said, here you go. Is this the one you want? And it was... It was. Um, it was the herb bag. It was an herb bag. But it's called something. It's called something that makes it sound almost like it's a. Yeah, gem bag. I said no. I'm looking for a gem bag. No, this is the one you asked for. She said. So yes, I felt like a complete heel. I made her do all this work. And it oh, was no. not what I wanted. What I wanted doesn't exist. And this is one of the guild leaders that you had do this for you. Yeah. So and they happen to be in raid. Will happened to be there. We were in a raid. We were doing a heroic. We were doing a five man heroic. Yeah, five man heroic. So they all got to hear my story, and it's just it was embarrassing. But you it know, was what? it was funny because I was in voice chat with them doing a five man, and uh, and the one the person that you had asked to make the bag was like, oh, I just made this this bag for this guildie, and uh, and I don't think he's even an herbalist, like. And she's all concerned and she's like, oh, I hope he's not taking it just to, to flip it and sell it on the auction house. I used my four day cooldown for this. And I didn't think anything of this. I'm thinking, oh, I wonder who this weirdo is. And they're like, yeah, it's this Okona guy. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, he's probably not ripping you off. He's probably just confused. And Did she's you say like, that to her? Yeah, because I was in <laughs> chat with them. And she's like, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm not mad. I'm just, I'm worried that he's just going to take it and, and sell it. Like, I don't know why he's asking for it. Like, it, did I make him the wrong thing? And she's all concerned that she had done something wrong. And she's all, like, confused and, like, starting to get upset. And I was like, no, like, I guarantee he's just confused. Like, he he wouldn't try and use the guild funds for, for his own profit. He's constantly giving stuff away. I guarantee that's not the issue. I know him well. I know that he's just a very confused old man. <laughs> and, well, I like that you stood up and you mentioned they got, that they got a good things. laugh out of that. But the thing is, they were not upset at you because you gave the bag back, right? They ended up giving it. There was another herbalist in the guild that needed one, so they just gave it to that herbalist. Yeah, it wasn't a problem. She was just stressing out for a minute. She's like, "Oh no, what did I do? Did I just give this away to somebody who's going to sell it?" But it was, it was a funny story because I was just, I'm just minding my own business and voice chat doing this dungeon and your name came up and I was like, oh. Was the emerald bag. Okay. And an emerald is a gem. So they, they were probably, th they probably thought that's what you probably thought that that's what you were asking for. And they thought that's what you were asking for. And it's all very confusing and funny. Yeah. Even, yeah, it's, uh, which is a shame. I could have used that in what my profession thing. makes those. No, none. They, they exist only in low levels. No, the herb bag. The it's emerald Taylor's. bag. It's Taylor, yeah. Oh, because I need one. For herbalism? Oh, for your for your warrior. For my warrior. Right. So, oh, you didn't really talk about the dailies. You just, I know, we just, you cut me complained off. about... Sorry. Um, so, tell us about the, what, what, what are some of the dailies you've been doing? Um, I do all of them except for one because the harpoon one just angers me and I can't do it because I'm arranged. The one, well, no, no, it's not even that. It's not that one. No, you, that's what you said. No, I said you wouldn't like it. What you have to do you is you have to... said I needed to get on the drake. You do. It's a different one, though. What you have to do for the one that I don't think you would like is you have to fire a harpoon up at a drake, and you have to ride the drake around and slowly punch it to death. And then, <laughs> then pull its mouth open and stab it 
in the throat from inside its mouth. World of Warcraft makes some weird quests. That that can't be right. It is. And you have to keep like have crawling up one? further to avoid the slashes. Not recently. It's actually really it's kinda hard to do. Like I failed it a couple times. Oh, I and just even assumed when you succeed, it was the one that I didn't like. No, even when you succeed, you succeed way up in the air and the Drake just dies and you drop. And then you die? Or do you yeah. get the parachute? No, you don't get a parachute, you just fall. And half the time if I don't use my paladin bubble, I fall to my death even if I complete the quest. I don't like it. I'm glad I'm done with the faction. I'm not doing that one anymore. Paladin bubble doesn't help you with the fall, does it? It certainly does. You can jump off of anything you want as long as you bubble before you hit the ground. Oh. It protects you from all damage. I do it all the time. Okay. If I'm too lazy to go somewhere, like, or even if I don't want to fly down because I'm up in the air, like say I'm flying somewhere and I just hit auto run and angle myself with the right direction. If I end up way up in the air, rather than point myself down and flying down, I just click off my mount and then bubble before I hit the ground. It's faster. I take the elevator down. Um, elevator down. But so what are the, what are some of the ones you actually do? Um, you want their names? No, I don't just know. just kind of describe them. Um, there's one because I feel like I feel like the people listening want to hear your voice more, probably. So oh no, they don't. No, they probably do. Um, I don't even know. There, what are though. the things I need to kill to get the ice thing? Then I have to put it on a steam thing. Like I'm not good at describing things. That's I just know good. how to do you, it. You, you kill gotta... a thing and get an ice thing, and then you put it on a steam thing. Yeah, you got to yeah. kill the ice revenants. Yeah. Okay. And then you stick it on the weird hot metal tips, and then you pick them up. Yeah, but the the thing that gets me is I'll be facing one, and then when I hit the button, it'll go to one, like, behind me. That's further away. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. But we've also had, when we were doing them together for a little while, if we click it at the same time, sometimes it'll go to the same one, and only one of us can loot it. Yeah, I know. Um, it wasn't you who did it to me, it was just another random person. No, we did it once, too. I had to go find another one. Oh, my bad. Well, it, was, it happens. But in the same spot as that, that's the spot where there's a bunch of fire elementals that I've been farming eternal fire because Al said he needs eternal fire. Do you still need eternal fire? That was me. I use them. Because I saved up a bunch and I was going to give them to you, but then Sam took all of them to make yeah. a cloak. Oh, for, for you. For you. Right, okay. For Al. Yeah. So I use them for Titan Steel. But Sam used them to make a cloak for you. Did you? Did she give you the cloak? Yes. yes. See, leatherworking has actually, you've been making some good stuff for us with leatherworking. Yeah. That's for right. us, I'm just Al. I've never no, made you made you me the leg armors, didn't you? Oh, did I buy? I just bought those because I didn't feel like waiting. I could use some leg armors. Yeah. So you make you make the leg armors and you make the cloaks. You were gonna make I've our actually tank a cloak, never but you one. made anything for myself. We well, should. I guess make I make legs? you everything. I thought you to... made those legs. Do you oh. not have your own purple versions of the armor of the leather versions you made me? No. She does. Yes, you do. You have the. You can make your own versions of the leg enchants, I think. Well, I used you also my have the last wrist. frozen you have the wrist orb ones. to make the cloak. Yeah. The wrist ones are unique to leather workers. Yeah, you that's can't. like the leather worker buff. You can make the wrist only enchants, which you've been doing, because you never want my wrist enchants. You always want your wrist enchants because they're better. I should yeah. probably check that because I don't think I've put it. If I've gotten a new wrist, I don't think I've put an enchant on it. Yeah, but that's one of the reasons I didn't take leather working is because I've done it a number of times and you were a leather worker, so I just went with JC, which is good. But not a lot of people are asking for my gems. Nobody I do need gems for you on my warrior, well, but I forget the, what ones they here's are. Here's the thing with your gems, and you have a lot of gem recipes. Did I not get you to make the the meta one, or did I just go buy that? You must have bought it. See, I have. You I'm have impatient. so much money. I'm impatient, so and I have buy a lot everything. of gold, so I'm always like. I need a gem. I should get Al to make this gem. And then I realized that I can just click the Orgrimmar portal and go buy it, and I'll have it right now. But you know what? We could find out where the recipe drops, and we could get together as a group and run that dungeon. Are they are they drops? I thought they were like, I thought you bought them with these daily tokens. Well, one of the ones you're looking for is a drop. Some are daily tokens. That plus 16 strength, I think, is a, is a bold. It's a bold Scarlet Ruby. Bold Scar yeah, that's... It's going to have to be I buy one of the ones I can purchase. Okay. Which that one might be two tokens? I think that one's two tokens. I can't read that. Yeah, it's my... I'm the only one that can read my handwriting. Sam's trying to read our agenda, and it's a lost cause. I'll do that when we get home. I'll get the bold. I'll get that made for you. When we get home or when you get home? Because we're home. When I get home. Okay. Provided... I no, go on the right down way. the right side of the streets. <laughs> because I actually... <laughs> okay, you got to tell that story. You know what? 
We're almost at an hour. I was going to do like a zone recap of Bori and Tundra, but it's a boring zone. <laughs> so let's, you let's just story. end it. Let's just end this episode with your story about how you got here and how you almost didn't. Yeah, well, almost didn't is a bit of an exaggeration, but could have been so much worse. All the best stories are exaggerated. Yeah. So there's a couple... Well, I won't say this because it'll be way too foreshadowy. But anyway, I pulled out of my driveway. I turned right. I turned left. I turned right. I was coming down to this place to do this pod podcast recording. Live, in person, because we can't figure out how to do it over the internet. Yes. And then I'm noticing that our three lanes, all of a sudden two lanes closed down into one, but I saw no arrows. I'm going, this is odd. I know I'm turning left, so I got into the left lane. I said, this is odd. Usually there's arrows. There's no indication. The lane didn't have all the proper paintings for a lane closing. And look up, there's a car headed right at me, which I immediately switched back over. I'm like, what the hell are you? And I'm looking around and I'm, I'm approaching the stoplights and I realize that I was on the wrong side of the road. The wrong one, side of the road one, or going the wrong way? I was going the way. wrong way on in a one-way one way street. street. <laughs> so it doesn't matter which side I was on, it was the wrong side of the road. So where I turned right, left, and then right I shouldn't have turned right and I should have known this because they're two one-way streets so obviously if I wanted to go this direction I should have just stayed on the damn street I was on but for some reason <laughs> you were I, just so eager to get here you went down a one-way street you just missed way us so much yeah. because we haven't seen each other I, in uh, almost three weeks okay so this is going to be a bit of an inadvertent shout out but I'm watching so much of these dash cam lessons on YouTube and all of a sudden I was the idiot <laughs> Did you get your dash cam video? I don't have a dash cam. I should get a dash cam. I got cams for everything. Use your imagination. But I don't have a dash cam. So that's that's a good note to add on. To, to end on. Not to add on. Uh, thank thank you for listening to Mere Casuals. And we will we'll see, see you, you on our next episode. We won't see you. We'll you won't see you. us either. You'll hear, You'll hear us. us. We'll talk to you next time. That's outrageous. Oh, God. Every time? <laughs>